G'day my friends, Marty Weir here from martysgarden.com.au Now I've got an exciting video for you today. got this amazing plant, heat resistant, edible, flowers, seeds, everything's edible, grows as a microgreen, protects your plants in summer, really good as a worm crop food as well, high protein, and we're going to discuss that further on in the video. We're going to have a look around the worm cave and get into a major problem that has occurred here where I live and throughout other parts of the world and in Australia. It's very unfortunate, but you see where there's a problem, there's a solution. All right, let's get into the video, shall we? Marty's Garden is all about compost worms, composting, farming worms indoors and out, and growing some of the most awesome food around. You can learn how by clicking the subscribe button and hitting the bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Welcome world to the Marty's Garden Show. All right, so just pull this up here. I've got a little sitting on a little pot behind me. This is called an amaranth plant if you don't know it already. This is the red garnet. And I'm pretty sure it's mixed and crossed with another plant called tricolour, which is basically another type of amaranth. And you can see here, because I was growing both, so I'm not sure if they've crossed or not. You can see he's got this beautiful leaf, and it's like a double sort of split colour. And this plant gets an amazing flower. You're going to be hearing a lot more about amaranth in the future. It's going to be like maybe the new kale that come out years ago, and everyone sort of got really excited about it. And so I'm pretty excited about this plant. I've been growing it for a few years now. I grow it for a few different reasons. I collect the seed for uh, the microgreens. It makes a beautiful microgreen. I'm not so fast on the flavor, but a lot of people really, really like it. Another reason I grow it is to actually protect plants in summer because it grows really big and it grows for about three months. It can get up to around about uh, two meters tall, so over six feet, six to eight feet big wide span and creates this massive big beautiful seed head now i think there's up to a thousand different varieties of amaranth that goes right back into uh mexico and down into uh, south america and things where the aztecs used to grow it and pretty much worship this plant the seed was their main grain for making breads and different things because it's so high uh, in pr protein and super super nutritious and as you can see this one here with the red leaves it's absolutely stunning and the red leaves what that does is it's, its own form of uh, like a sun sunscreen and you put other plants down below it and it just shades them underneath and gives them that protection from the midday sun so i really love this plant and if you've never grown it before you may consider doing it they've got trials happening all over the world they're using the, the major one like uh, the food source variety for feeding all types of animals uh, I don't know if they're feeding horses with it in China, but they're doing uh, all their pigs and everything that they're feeding in China, and they can't get enough of this. They're trialling it over in WA at the moment in Australia. Big, massive trials going on. I haven't heard anything recently about that, but an amazing, an amazing plant. And I'm really getting into growing these type of plants that can handle the heat and do well and, you know, don't stress out and stuff. So if you want to hear more about... Um, I'm going to call this the grow table. So if you want to see more plant videos, and I'll bring out plants and show you uh, in these sort of vlog style videos and discuss their benefits and sort of how to grow them and why you should maybe consider having them in your garden. Because I've got quite a lot of unique Asian crops growing in my backyard. All right, so I'm going to grab the camera and then I'm going to show you what else is going on because. I've got these like worm nurseries that I've started up now, and I'm pretty excited about that. I'm expanding this into a little shop, and this is gonna be really, really, really cool. I've got uh, the compost pods coming out, uh, which I've sold, been selling a couple to locals, and they may be coming onto the website uh, very soon. So that's a liquid uh, fertilizer, which I'll show you here before I grab the camera. And so, no plastic, liquid worm tea with castings and chelated minerals in there so you get your magnesiums your ions and all the different things like that that help with the photosynthesis of plants and if you look down in there 
you can see without me spilling it ah uh, that's a bit hard to see but you can see the color of that coming out there and get that into there without me spilling any of it no that's not working there we go it's a better look at it and you can see like a weak tea that's the color that you want when you're making it and basically I'm creating this because I'm tired of seeing everything come in plastics. I want to see things break down. The only thing that doesn't break down from this is the string there, and you can actually make around about 50 litres. So as it's sort of getting weak, you just squeeze it into the water. You're using a chlorinated water or tap water. You let it sit for about 24 hours. Then all that microbes and biology and nutrition goes into the water and then onto the plants. And that's pretty much what I use for my microgreens and all my plants outdoors, other than sort of some of the leachate that comes through um, the worm farms. And this is a really, really interesting product because once it's finished, it just goes into the compost bin or you bury it into a pot or put it around underneath a uh, fruit tree or something like that. And then that'll become like a little water sump as well, a soluble water sump, which will store moisture and will spread the microbes throughout the system. And you can make your own worm teas and liquid fertilizers and things from this. Spray it onto leaves of plants. There's no bad E. coli or anything, any funky stuff in there. And because of the minerals, when it hits the water, uh, they're slow release as well, and you'll have the minerals that you don't normally get. will go into the system, into the ground, and feed that biology to get the biology spreading further. So these are an amazing product the compost pod and it looks like they're going to be coming back out soon and if you're interested in this maybe get in contact with me uh, send me an email and I'll see what I can do see if I can get some out to you real soon right so let's have a look at the stand I've got over here I've got these uh, like nurseries things happening because uh, we're going into level four water restrictions here where I live which is really really sad I'm just praying that we'll we'll get some more rain um, that's going to be big problems for my compost business here. It already has been for a very long time because um, we've had level three and I haven't really spoken about it much uh, on the channel, but the compost and my artisan compost is a big part of the uh, Marty's Garden products that come out locally here. Anyway, let's get this over here to a bit of a wobble on the camera there. So I start my microgreens at the top. I haven't got any started here at the moment. Um, but we've got trays and trays of worms. So there's 250 mature worms in here, another 250 mature worms in there, and then underneath these other ones, uh, sort of their baby wisps and different sizes that have come out of uh, worm farms. And I've got like a, if we open it up, you can see I've got a plastic cover on top for the bag, and then I have a wet towel uh, underneath, and I just spray the wet towel, and you can see the little wormies moving around here underneath the wet blanket they love that wet blanket a little bit of mango just there under there and they're starting to feed onto that as well now the bedding has um the old horse manure and the old peat and the old peat the recycled peat has like little hairs and fibers and things through it i washed all the salts out and um they're feeding on that as well and so pretty much right through got the old towel underneath holding that in and i just come along with my spray bottle which i usually put a bit of worm tea in there as well to help with the biology and a bit of some minerals and things and ch -ch 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 spray a couple of times a day and make sure that towel stays moist and uh yeah and, and keep that going i'm got some biochar so i'm putting biochar at the bottom you can see it in the bags here which i'm considering uh, selling some but i don't know if i've got enough maybe i want to keep it for myself the biochar there and that will get activated from the uh, worms inside there and then we've got bags or another bag of worm castings if we come across here i did a big big harvest of worm cast you can see this big bag here it's up to full up to about there so we've got about 50 liters in here at the moment and i'll pull some out and show you this stuff is some of the best castings that i've ever made um, because what I did was I actually let it go for a second run. I had lots of cocoons in the castings and I let it sit in the worm farms uh, over in the corner over there and got thousands of little worms in there. What you can see in these trays 
here. They literally there's thousands of baby wisps in there, and I'm just going to feed them up and eventually get them out. Now the bedding in there is very fine; it's been sifted. So when I pour it straight into uh, one of the um, strainers, so if I've got the sifter here, can't find the sifter at the moment. So yeah, I've got a sifter, and then it sifts into there, and I'll get worms will get thrown there. This all stuff will fall through into the bottom again and then I'll have the worms and I can weigh them and count them. So I've had to do that inside partly because I don't want to lose um, a lot of my worms from outside because uh, we get water restrictions and problems here. I'm just hoping that it rains. Uh, I'm still going to have thousands of worms in here. I released another 3,000 into my compost rows outside um, the other day. and. I'm just, you know, I'm in that stage of, I'm going to sit down back in my chair now. I'm going to get the camera flipped back around. So I'm in that stage now for the Marty's Garden business. If people have been following me for a while, you know that the last couple of years I've been trying to go full time. I had, um, every time recently when I've tried, I had that illness, the dystonia, which struck me pretty hard for a couple of years. And then... Uh, I had to move house from the micro farm and down in here. And then uh, I was just ready to go again. I broke my knee uh, surfing. So that put everything right back. But we're on top of things. The only thing is, is this, this water restriction. Um, it's a big problem here. And it's looking like it's going to rain though. So if we get the rain, um, the compost is definitely going to uh, start taking off my artisan compost which we're going to go around and have a quick look at now. So I hope you're enjoying this bit of a casual vlog style video. And I might try and bring these out through in the, to the middle of the week a little bit more, depending on time and how things are going and everything. The sun's pretty bright here, so I'm going to squint my eyes a little bit. And we're going to walk around and I'm going to give you a bit of a squizzy on the uh, compost pile over here. All right, let's turn this camera around and get it happening for you so you probably see my shadow in the video because you can see where i'm filming so we've got this part here and this part's really quite hot at the moment it's got the coffee and the different blends through it and this part pretty much ready to go here and that will be sifted the only thing is people aren't going to come and buy it i was going to bag more this morning but because we're going into level four water restrictions i don't think they're going to come and buy it so i thought i'm better off letting that sit just longer um, become a better product and mix it through so under here i'm trying to keep these worms alive and um, when we get rain uh, it does hold a lot of moisture so we're going to cruise around to the other side here and see if we can find any compost worms um, in this section here where i'm trying to sort of breed up cocoon numbers here you can see some coffee underneath and so we dig through this little one there these are just where i released a whole lot of little baby wisps uh, into here and so you can see there there's a lot of young ones in there which is really great if we come along here we probably find more larger mature worms uh, into this system here so that's he's a semi that's a semi mature one i've released a lot of smaller ones uh, into here as well and if we can get some of the bigger worms you can see i've got bigger ones than this again um, that i was digging up the other day he's a fair size you know like um they sort of like put himself out it's long and narrow and then he wants to pump himself together uh he can and so as we dig through here, you can see uh, they're in here. And this is what makes this compost very special, is the actual fact that they get, they're burrowing through this and creating, spreading the biology, all the microbes, the fungi and different things, laying their castings. And you can see there's a big clitellum on this one. Uh, he's quite a good-sized mature worm. And I've, got, I've literally got thousands of those um, in here if not tens of thousands, maybe even a hundred thousand. It's hard to count uh, the numbers. But if we cruise around and sort of look on this side a bit, we might see something a little bit different. There were some really big ones um, in here into this 
area here but I've done some digging around last day or two so they probably have moved now so we'll see what we can find here I just want to show you so there's a good sized mature worm and I was getting bigger ones than that I want to find one of these real nice big ones for you um, they've gone down deep obviously oh yes a good sized one he sort of like hadn't shrunk himself up I don't know how the light's going so well on that and he's not going to enjoy it being out in the sun like that so but they are right through this compost which is pretty interesting and I've got it covered over with a couple of laps of shade cloth and there's literally meters upon meters here if people are wanting to know about the grass growing um, from the metal dust uh, that area was just this area whole or here was just all brown and had no way of sort of holding any soil and it was just getting compacted and you can see it's starting to grow back into that area now which is pretty interesting and where my compost is here and the blue metal is here you can look at it just how tall it is it just needs a bit of a mow but the, overall the grass is growing uh, pretty good and the, the metal dust did hold um, the soil from being blown away so overall that's pretty good we'll head back to the worm cave now as I said, this is going to be uh, my little shop area where people come and pick up the compost, which is pretty cool. So they can come and pick up the compost. Um, I've got worm tea that's going to be bottled up uh, as well. I've got a little bubbler coming, a little solar bubbler system um, that's going to sit sort of just outside, get that sunlight, and then pump into my little tanks here. I've got one little tank here and I've got another one. Oh, excuse me another clear one and yeah I'll be able to bottle it up and sell it for around about a dollar twenty five a litre other than that they can pick up a compost pod if I've got any here and go home and uh, make their own so basically I've got the compost coming out in the 30 litre bags sell it ten dollars a bag it's got worm castings and all that amazing biology in it it's going to be the compost pod uh, I'm probably going to have a seed raising mix if I can get that um, together if people really want it. I can make one of those up for people in spring, locals and things that want to grow an organic seed raising mix and also have the uh, the worm tea, maybe a few plants and things like that. Sell a few worms uh, as well and you know maybe if I get some special orders for different things then I'll, I'll make them up too. So the Marty's Garden business is coming along quite well with also the courses that you can do over at martysgarden.com.au I use the organic seed raising course, which is just really cool. It teaches you how to use all your worm castings and things to uh, raise seedlings at home to keep away pests and diseases uh, from your plants. And also the worm farming course uh, in itself. So everything's pretty good here at Marty's Garden and I am really stoked to be moving forward. I just want to have some rain so I don't have this level four water restriction, which means I'm not allowed to get the hose out onto the compost outside or onto any of my plants outside um, so that means I've got to save water from the shower and all that type of stuff. water plants uh, like this uh, in my containers and out in the garden so we've got to struggle but I will get through I reckon we're going to get some rain again over the next couple of nights and I'm going to get out there and turn over that compost a bit more and get it ready because I'm psyched I really want to get going it's the first year of Marty's garden going full-time not part-time it's exciting times thanks for your support guys i really love you all have a great day if you want to learn more from me and follow the channel subscribe before you go i really appreciate it and i'll see you at the next video real soon i appreciate your time bye for now Whee!